Hi everyone, um, I'm Isabel from All Tangled Up Knits and I'm gonna do something a little different today. Um, just thought it would be kind of fun, or maybe not today, this is gonna take me a while actually. There's gonna be a few of these if everything goes well. Um, I've been practicing with or playing with spindle spinning for the last few months and I've been having an absolute blast with it. So I picked up um, some fiber yesterday. It's the second dyed braid I've ever gotten. Um, so I've done some just nice undyed BFL, a beautiful dyed braid from Seeing Raven Farms of Falkland. And this one is from Tempting You Fibers, or Tempting You, uh, which is, they're the dyers from my local yarn shop. Clover Hill Yarn in Catonsville, Maryland. And this is just the most beautiful um, Polworth and Silk blend. And it's just so pretty. I saw it and uh, my friend saw it and was like, oh my gosh, that's mermaid hair. And it totally is. Look at this thing. This is like total mermaid hair. So I am really... I'm ready to do some mermaid hair yarn. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to record these as almost like a spinning diary. Um, just recording some of the different steps of what I do. And just as a note, brand new at this. Started spinning in November. So please absolutely no one take anything that I say as how you should do it. This is just kind of what I'm doing. This is just me having fun playing with spinning. I've been learning out of books and off YouTube. Um, I went to a spinning gathering yesterday at Clover Hill, which is why I ended up finding this and just learned so much watching these ladies spinning on their wheels while I'm just sitting here with my drop spindle. Um, so today I was going to just get this separated out. And yeah, so if you're interested, keep watching. All right, All right so let's do this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just start unwinding this braid, um, which they're convenient because you can just pull through the loops. It's essentially like finger crocheted in so that you can just pull through the loops and start to, oh no, unravel it. And this luckily is clipped in, so I don't have to faff around with cutting anything or ripping anything. I can just unclip it. Oh no, eek. Um, and boom, I'm gonna keep that so that I make sure I have all the information once my yarn is spun. So I'm just going to keep unwinding here. Um, I'll see if my husband can get me to help speed this up. <laughs> So you can see I've got this nice jumble of um, wool here, and this is just the most like beautiful, like plush, squishy um, yarn. And you can see these little bits of um, silk throughout it. So what I want to do is I want it to be kind of fractal-ish spun. Um, and I want that because I don't want all of these colors just to line up into kind of block stripes. So what I wanna do is I think I'm going to make this one into a three ply. Yes, this is another first. I've never done a three ply. It's only ever been two. Um, and so I'm going to try to separate this out into three equal pieces if it wants to. Um, so looking at this, the last one I had just separate. Okay, so you can see here, it kind of it kind of does want to separate out into three, which is kind of nice. They're not entirely equal, but I will try to make up for that as I go. Um, <laughs> this makes me super nervous, but that's okay because it's wool and I can just add a little bit to one if they're way off. So I've got one side kind of, I'm going to separate one out first, or at least most of one. Ooh. You know what? This piece wants to be with it, so we're gonna let it be with it. There we go. Okay, 
Oh dear. That piece did not want to be with it. I lied. Nope, we're not putting it back. We're just keeping going with what we're doing. Oh dear. Um, that's okay. As I said, I do not know what I'm doing. So we're just kind of doing this. Um, there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. That was making me nervous because it was ripping right down the center of the thing and it wouldn't have split equally into three. But here we go. We're doing it now. Ooh, this is a little bit more than a third now. It's okay. Oh, you can see we're getting from like the deep kind of turquoisey greenish blues to kind of lighter, more like kelpy greenish blues that are a little bit less saturated. And oh, this really is just mermaid hair was the best description of this. Okay, good. Got kind of thick in the middle, a little bit more than a third, but it's thinning back out. So I'm kind of confident that these will be close enough to equal. I'll get my scale later to check. Um... All right, so this is one third. I am going to just, this is a really short desk, so I'm gonna prop, I'm going to just put this aside while I separate the other two. All right, there's one. And just once again as a comment, this is a fractal-ish separating it out. Um, I watched a few videos on fractal spinning. This is just kind of, this is how I'm gonna do it. So <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I don't wanna be too precious about it, honestly, um, uh, for this anyway. And the nice thing is, because of the way these colors are, I don't think I have to be too precious about how I separate out the colors, that I think it's just gonna look awesome either way. There will be enough contrast, but since they're kind of lower contrast blues, I don't think it'll be a huge deal. And that's kind of been, so far, my whole spinning journey. If you know what, it's fine. If it makes yarn, it works out. If I think it's pretty, great, it works out. If I don't think it's pretty, I don't know, I'll hold a strain of mohair with it or something, I don't care. <laughs> um, maybe I'll get a little more perfectionistic eventually or maybe when I get a wheel, but I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just making pretty yarn. Um, okay, this one's being a little bit weird. That wants to be over here. There we go, okay. That's gonna make it easier from now on. There we go, bit weird. Okay, that's fine. All right. Here is one of them. Beautiful. Oh, that one ended up with not as much silk in it as the others. Kind of funny just the way that works out. And here is the third one. So what I'm going to do now is, I think this is the one to do it with. I'm going to take this and I'm going to split it again. Um, so I'll take the first one and then the first one I'm just gonna spin end to end. Um, this one, this will be my second one. I'm splitting it in half and I'm going to split spin each of those halves end to end so that like the color changes come quicker. And then honestly, I have not decided whether I want to take the third one and just spin it end to end like the first one or if I want to do something else with it. So I'm actually, I'm just going to, you know what? I'm going to do this right now so that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to do the little crochet chain thingy and get this guy set into its own little braid. And I will decide about that after I've seen the first two. Um, so here we are. Uh, this is gonna take me a minute to remember. I've only done it a few times. Yee, don't stick.
All right, so this is braid number, well, either one or three. Um, if I'm spinning both one and three end to end, it doesn't really matter. Either way, I'm gonna spin this one end to end first. This will be one, this will be three. I'm gonna make up cards and just label them so that when I get around to this, because spindle spinning takes quite a bit of time that I remember. Um, so this guy's, it's not a neat braid, but you know what? I'm not a professional, I don't care. <laughs> it does it does what it needs to do. Um, so there we go, that guy's set aside. Um, now this one, this is what I'm going to split into two other pieces. And so I'm just going to do that now. I'll get this guy out of the way. Do, do, do. Ooh, this one's gonna be a little bit funky. That's okay. And I'm not terribly concerned, once again, about them splitting into perfectly even pieces. Um, ooh, and it's splitting into three. But I will end up like, I'll have no idea what I just did, but I will make it work. And that is a-okay by me. Okay, that's, what the heck is even going on here? No idea what I did, but that's okay because we're still splitting and it's fine. Now this one actually kind of seems to want to split into three. Um, so maybe I will end up doing that. We'll see. Either way, since I'm going to be spinning it quite fine, I'm not terribly concerned that it's getting the slightest bit thin on these. Well, how does this, how, how? Hmm. It was over here and now it's wrapped on the other side. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's fine. We're going to just put that and put that there and that will all just get spun into itself and it'll be fine. <laughs> Um, beautiful. Actually, no, that worked as two. Um, so here we have two, and I'm gonna braid these equally, or braid these each, obviously equally. Um, I'll braid them each and then set these guys aside to be spun together. And of course, these little braid, or not really a braid, crochet doodad, hooky do thing. These are both gonna be a lot skinnier. And do 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 do. I did these with the purple braid that I did and these small ones, I look at them like, oh great, this is gonna be so quick to cro to um, spin without my brain realizing that obviously I had two of them <laughs> and it took just as long. <laughs> but it's nice, it's kind of a little brain fool or fooling your brain thing. All right, so um, while I was um, separating the second section, I kind of was thinking that one thing seemed a little thinner than the others. And as I was braiding it, this is definitely like one third of the section and this is definitely more like two thirds. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out and I'm going to separate it again. And for the middle one, I'm gonna spend each of the three end to end to end. Um, and that'll make the kind of color changer chain, yeah, oh man, color changes come a little bit more quickly in the finished yarn, which will be interesting. Um, so we're undoing it now. Here's this one, and I'm gonna just split this one in half. The nice thing is I'm spinning it quite fine, so I'm not too concerned about making it too thin. It will be okay. Um, there we go. I cannot get enough of this blue. This is like my favorite thing ever. I'm gonna sit, separate it kind of in the middle here to see where it wants to split. There we go, that's better. The silk makes it a little trickier. The Falkland I had separated so nicely, and this is separating nicely, but the silk is kind of being funky and wrapping around and wanting to go different ways um, and making funky things like this happen. Um, but that's okay, must just be the nature of the beast. Um, if it's not, let me know in the comments. Um, Cause I'm sure I'm definitely doing lots of things. I don't wanna say necessarily wrong, but differently. Um, I'm a firm believer in if it works, it's not wrong, but I'm sure some people are probably seeing what I'm doing and being like, oh my God. But you know what? 
I'm pretty okay with that. Um, but absolutely tell me any tips, tricks, hints, what, what not you have in the comments. That would be, anything would be super helpful for me because I'm a total beginner. As you can definitely tell. <laughs> there we go. Now this is in thirds and that seems a lot more, <laughs> a lot more accurate. So I'm just going to braid these each. Um, and I'll catch up with you once I've braided these two sections and I will braid the first section as well, just a little bit. I'm only going to braid part of it so that it's not like a hindrance while I'm spinning. If I was spinning from a wheel, I'd probably just put the end in a bag and leave it unbraided. But with my spindle, I like to kind of throw the braid over my shoulder or over my arm, um, there and not have like the wool itself be too long. So that is what I'm going to do. All right, so I've just got my little food scale and yes, I totally should have done this before um, braiding everything up, but I'm just going to kind of check the weights of each of the pieces, see how off they are. Um, I like doing it in grams just because that's what I'm used to. All right, so that's 33 grams. This one is. 39 grams. Oh, good Lord. And this one is a whopping 46 grams. Um, so as I go, I might like honestly just take the end off of part of one of them and add it to another one or even I'm going to spin this one up first and I might spin this and then spin a teeny bit from one of these guys at the very end of it just to try to even them out the teeniest bit once again i know that's probably not exactly um a normal spinning practice but you know what i'm doing it um so uh yeah that was just um how i am personally kind of breaking up that braid into three separate sections that i can spin um, I still might break this one up, but I'm not sure yet. I'm going to leave this one to last. Um, so I'm going to get started on this guy before these three lovelies get spun from end to end, but I'll be honest, this is going to take me forever. Um, so I'm going to be using this little, um, bottom roll drop spindle that I got, um, from... Ginger Twist Studios in Edinburgh over Christmas break um, to keep myself sane while I was quarantined, as you do. Um, so I think this one will work best for this. This guy's a little bit heavy for what I'm trying to do. Um, check back in with me next time to spin the first braid and see how it goes. All right, bye. Look who got on the desk. Hey buddy, what's up? What's up, Byron? Wanna say hi?